Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Online Learning Success Workshop, uh, sponsored here with CalTAP and partnership with Skyline College. Um, we are here to provide some informational resources for you and tips and tricks to give you some uh, online learning success tips. Uh, my name is Kirk Eller. I am a CalTAP training coordinator here in the CalVet Veteran Services Division, and I'm going to be going through some uh, overview of your CalTAP and veteran CalTAP CalVet benefits and your California specific benefits. Please excuse me. So with that being said, we're going to kick things off. Uh, first off, if you have not done uh, a webinar before prior to this, and you're uh, unfamiliar with the tools of this, we are going to be using our Q&A tab for any questions that you may have during this webinar. Uh, my colleague, Derek Rose, is gonna be posting some informational resources in the chat function. So if you're not familiar, please use the toolbar below and open the chat, uh, as well as the Q&A portion and type your question in the Q&A tab and we will address it uh, with uh, our online panel towards the end of the webinar or it will be answered uh, accordingly throughout the webinar by the subject matter expert pertaining to the information. Uh, then when you open the chat, my colleague Derek will be posting some information, including our veteran resource book, as well as the map for the links in the chat and ongoing, there will be some links as well posted in there for you to access some relative information as we go through the, the webinar. Uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and kick things off. Uh, I have myself today, I'm going to be focusing and providing some information on the CalVet overview. And then we have Kevin Graves, who is our local interagency network coordinator here. He will be focusing on his roles and responsibilities as a link coordinator in the Bay Area region. And then I'm going to follow up after that with our online learning success tools for your... And then following that, we will do the Q&A, uh, like I mentioned at the end. So CalTAP was actually designed in a form to connect uh, veterans of all eras of their earned benefits from the federal and the state, and then provide that continued support or continuum of care as those needs change over time. And how we do that is through our five pathways, which is the core curriculum, education pathway, employment, and our entrepreneurship pathway. Our fifth pathway are service providers for those that are uh, using that as a training module tool to uh, assist them that want to serve veterans. This is a snapshot of our veterans resource book. Um, like I mentioned, my colleague Derek Rose will be posting a digital copy of this in the chat, as well as a link to download this to any device that you desire. Uh, please access this. Use the online version of the veteran resource book to access the most updated information. Uh, this is our CalVet website at calvet.ca.gov. Uh, here you can see a lot of the information uh, that services and resources available to you. Uh, to get to the CalTAP portal, you'll see the laptop there on the right. Uh, just click that icon and it'll take you here to the CalTAP portal. There you can see each one of our five pathways. And for the California specific benefits for the overview, we're gonna focus on the core curriculum pathway. Click on that link. Uh, you'll see each one of these self-paced modules that you can access for various resources and information uh, on health care, claims and compensation. Uh, but module five will focus on your California specific benefits. So you ask, what are your California specific benefits? And let's get right into those. Uh, we have the most popular, obviously, is one of the college tuition fee waiver for veteran dependents. Uh, there are four plans available, A, B, C, and D. Two A and B are the most popular. Um, a and B require, A requires a 100% service connected disability rating from the veteran. Uh, and then B requires a zero to 100% service connected from the veteran. Uh, the dependent does need to have an earning threshold limit on plan B uh, and an age limit eligibility requirement on plan A. Uh, if you have any questions about the eligibility or anything, we can uh, wrap that up at the Q and A portion. For time purposes, we like to move on and just highlight what our benefits are, uh, and then we can answer any questions uh, in the Q&A. 
Uh, we also have a veteran designation on your driver's license, but we can facilitate that through our county veteran service offices. Uh, and it's a nice feature to have on your license that shows that you are a veteran to carry one document around. Also, the motor vehicle registration fee waiver for service-connected veterans of 100% with permanent and total mobility issues, they can have their registrations waived for one of their vehicles. Uh, also, reduced fishing and hunting license for service-connected veterans of 50% uh, or greater. Uh, and then also the no-cost park pass is a 50% service connected for veterans as well. This gives them an opportunity to purchase hunting and fishing license at uh, around $9 and a no cost state park pass uh, free of charge to any of the state parks in the state of California. To access those, you would go to their websites, either the wildlife.ca.gov or the parks.ca.gov website, and you can find more information on how to apply for those. Uh, related to our disabled veteran property tax exemption and the business tax exemption, uh, we would refer you to your local government entity where you do pay your taxes for those uh, because each one of the county tax assessor's office is going to have the specific exemption related to where you reside. This is a list of our CalVet divisions. Veteran services is one where uh, I reside in CalTAP unit. Uh, we have our home loans division which provides home loans to veterans. And uh, you, there is a capability of applying a VA federal guarantee with that home loan. Uh, so we will have some information in the chat on how to contact our home loan specialist if you have information, or you can just access that information on our website as well. We have a women veterans division. Uh, they provide advocacy and outreach specifically to women veterans and the needs that they have. And they also have a statewide roster that you can sign up for to receive updated information and ongoing vet, women veterans in, uh, resources available to them. Same with the minority and underrepresented veterans. They also uh, provide advocacy and outreach to un minority and underrepresented veterans. Uh, and they also assist in the naturalization process for unnaturalized veterans, uh, which is a really big expensive project right now for their program. Uh, we have eight homes for veterans uh, for long-term care throughout the state of California, and they provide various levels of care for our aging veterans throughout the state, uh, from independent living all the way up to skilled nursing facilities and geriatric and memory care units. We have three state cemeteries in the state of California for burial, uh, one in Seaside, California, up in Igo, up in Redding. There's also a cemetery. And then our third one is attached to the Yachtville Veteran Home in the Napa Valley. Uh, please be advised the cemetery in Yachtville does require the res residency at the Yachtville Veteran Home to be interned in that cemetery. Okay, so I mentioned our continuum of care and continued support and how we wanna stay connected with you. Uh, here it just shows some highlights, some ways that you can stay uh, available and how we can access and continue care for you. Uh, provide that non-DOD email to caltap at calvet.ca.gov. Uh, you can also register for My CalVet on our homepage uh, and then add social media on your social media platforms for veteran services. Uh, we do record these webinars. This one in particular will also be recorded and it will be uploaded to our CalVet YouTube channel, which has the QR code there as well. So when you attend these webinars, you'll be able to receive a, stem, or a survey for each webinar. And we do ask that you do take the time to fill out that seminar because we take that feedback seriously and we want to do that continued improvement to provide these seminars and webinars for you and the needs that meet your needs. Here's how you would register for My CalVet. On our homepage, you can just click that create and register there and walk through the procedures and provide your information. And you would receive a quarterly newsletter as well as a weekly updated list of on upcoming events. Uh, this is what our quarterly newsletter would look like. Uh, you can access this uh, via the email will be distributed to you and you would receive information on upcoming webinars as well as informational in the news and that continued moments that matter. 
We also want to highlight the VA's website. Uh, this is where you would go for accessing and managing all of your VA benefits, uh, as well as finding information about health care, uh, disability and compensation records, and your education benefits. This is my contact information. Uh, my email address is there, as well as our 800 number, which is also on the Veteran Resource Book. Uh, again, our social media QR codes, if you have interest in accessing those. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to turn this over now to our link coordinator, who is Kevin Graves for the Bay Area, and he's going to provide you information on what his roles and responsibilities are in this region. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Hey, everybody. I don't know if my video is working or it's not working, but uh, it's on. I would... Uh, like to um, welcome all you to the webinar today. And if you go to the first slide, I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. So our primary responsibility, wait, where's the map, guys? Is there, a, is there a link with the map? on? There we go. So there are eight link regions within the, uh, within the state, and there are therefore eight of us that uh, cover about 1.3 million vets within the state of California. We all know our own regions better than we know other regions. My region happens to be the one you're located in, which is kind of the green region there uh, in the middle of the state, the Bay Area. I've got 10 counties there that I am uh, responsible for, but I definitely know the resources that are available there than I do, let's say, the ones down in the Inland Empire. So we list all the links. So if you are happen to know somebody that's in another area that you want to refer uh, to us, or if you're helping out another veteran, or if you relocate to a different area in the state, you can contact the bet, the uh, link in your area that would know what bet resources and benefits are available specifically to that region. Uh, can I get the next slide down? So here is here is a. I guess I, I guess I kind of skipped the slide. Anyway, we're good. So this so our primary our primary purpose is to be outreach for for, the, for the, uh, the Veteran Services Division. We are out in the field, we're boots on the ground, we work closely together with uh, governmental, non-governmental, for-profit, non-profit agencies that provide benefits and resources for veterans. Uh, we try to connect you to them. Um, we may not have all the answers, but we probably know where you can get the answers. And so we do that by um, connecting with several different governmental agencies and, and we partner for employment with the EDD. They have dedicated uh, employees that uh, work only for you, the veterans. They either are working for you, uh, helping you put together your resume, helping you find a job, or they're working to help you find employers that want to hire veterans and getting you in contact with them. It's a two-pronged attack. We also work very closely with our county veteran service offices. In fact, most of the benefits and resources that you heard Kirk talk about are the eligibility for those resources, whether it be a hunting license, whether it be enrollment into one of our uh, veteran homes, whether it be veteran status on your license plate, those benefits are all that eligibility is verified through your county veteran service office. In the magic book, in the book that we talked about is a list of all uh, 58 counties and the veteran service offices in those counties. Um, and of course, we also partner with our big brother, the VA, who um, provides all your your comp and pen and all your um, health benefits. And we work together to try to make sure that things are moving along the way they should be there. Um, if we need a liaison with them, we can do that. We have connections within, within those departments also. Next slide, please. Is there another? Okay. So I pretty much covered everything. Um, we, we're out there in the field. We're working on your behalf. We encourage you to contact one of us uh, in the region in which we're located. Uh, if you need any help navigating through some of the complicated systems, again, we don't have all the answers, but we probably could help you find those answers. Um, we spend a lot of time answering phone calls uh, all day long, uh, helping veterans uh, work their way through the system. Uh, there's my contact information. That's my cell phone number. I would, I would stick with the uh, uh, 817, stay away from the 800 number. If you need to get a hold of me personally, if you need general information, use the 800 number and there is an email address for me. And I think that's all I have for you guys at this point. So have a great day and enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate you logging in. Drive safe. 
All right, everyone, uh, please contact Kevin. There's his cell phone number for, like you mentioned, if you have specific information for him directly, like you, and then if you have general information, use the 800 number. Uh, now we're gonna move on to the online learning success, our topic for today. Uh, I was a virtual learner myself as an adult. Uh, so there are some typical things that you would need to do to be successful in this uh, tenure of virtual learning. It's not for everyone. So uh, the first thing you may wanna do is, is understand what type of instruction you may be getting into. Is it uh, synchronous or asynchronous? Uh, obviously the synchronous involves the students interacting with the teacher in real time and other students in an open forum or virtual conference call. Uh, this is where you would log in at a specific time for a lecture or discussion and then provide that feedback and um, rapport with your teacher and your student, fellow students. Asynchronous, you could log in at any time. It's a portal where you would use a chat feature. Your instructions would be posted there directly for you to do your assignments. And then you would have a discussion question usually to uh, answer within a certain amount of time period. So there is no direct interference, interaction with your other fellow students other than just a chat uh, or message board. So during the synchronous instruction, you want to make sure that you have that uh, continuity you want to dress appropriately. Uh, you wouldn't want to have any wardrobe malfunctions if you're in your, you know, bathrobe. Obviously, you want to be comfortable, but uh, dress appropriately for class. Uh, make sure your microphone and your camera uh, is on and working if it's required. Uh, if not, make sure you stay muted so that you don't provide any other distractions for other students that may be speaking. Uh, just the common courtesies involved with uh, general webinar instructions. Uh, and then also have a pos possible, have a location with no distractions that are gonna create any background noise if you're able to do that. If you have children at home, uh, that may be a difficult challenge. You want to maybe consider uh, meet for live instruction, ask the prof professor for permission to record the Zoom lecture so that you can access it again later on. Uh, and then also one of the big things is to sign in early. Uh, like anything, I had some difficulties this morning as well, logging in with my speakers and microphone. So I had to reboot my system and it was working fine. So you'd have to kind of plan ahead for those things. They do happen. So signing in early gives you that buffer time to adapt and overcome those. So you wanna make for sure that uh, you can access any technical difficulties uh, within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, and then with that technology, uh, we uh, you know you have to embrace the technology to be successful with the virtual reality. Uh, during the pandemic, everybody has done that since, you know, to 2020. Uh, but there are some things that you can do to kind of assist you with this. One is your internet connectivity. Uh, there may be some technical requirements for your class, specifically the platform that you're going to be using for your student uh, learning environment uh, or your classroom. Uh, they may have a specific bandwidth that you need to be successful with that. Um, it may be recommended that you have a certain software platform downloaded specifically for that class. Maybe you need to have Mozilla or Firefox or just Google Chrome, whichever is going to be the best one. It's recommended maybe to talk to your virtual or your IT folks at your school on what technical requirements and capabilities that you may need for that laptop and your hardware and accessories, as well as the software and bandwidth that you need for your Internet. Uh, checking all those things in advance to make sure that you don't have, uh, to make sure you have adequate equipment and technical requirements to be successful is key in not having those delays or things when you log into your school. Also, the online resources that you need for the class, i.e. whether it's Zoom, Canvas, or Google Suite, whichever platform that you're going to be using to connect into your classroom. Uh, virtual fatigue, which is a real thing. We all know this from the pandemic. People have uh, had virtual overload with accessing, you know, websites and webinars and workshops and conferences for school or work or just social communication with their friends. Uh, it kind of overload uh, during the pandemic. Um, and it does create a fatigue for you, uh, especially in an educational environment. You want to make sure you can stay focused to be successful so that you can complete your classroom work and your instruction. Uh, because we are social creatures as human beings. We wanna be around everybody 
in person and we need that connection. So it kind of violates that educational design to learn. Obviously, everybody has their own learning style, whether it's visual or audio uh, or physical touch. So how we learn uh, dictates how we can be successful. If you understand your learning style, uh, maybe you can adapt your virtual way of learning to make yourself successful. Whether it's passive learning, an isolated environment, uh, or technology interferences, each one of these can create this pat this virtual fatigue that can overload us and cause us not to be successful and hinder us from having that educational success. So the structure and organization, you want to determine where and when and how you're going to learn how to study. Uh, you want to, is it um, the time of day? Like I've said, if you have to log in at a specific classroom or a conference uh, during that time, or is it afterwards asynchronous? Uh, you, if so, you want to manage your time accordingly. If you have to log in at a specific time, log in early um, and then eliminate distractions. You want to separate yourself to a place where you can have complete focus on what you're trying to accomplish and learn uh, and interact with the other students and your professor. Uh, if the courses aren't live during your scheduled times, you can watch those recorded ones or videos and then do the readings or maybe the discussion questions afterwards at a scheduled time. Uh, you know, obviously, a good point is to use your calendar for planning purposes so that you have that reminders and alarm set up so that you don't miss a class or miss something that you may have. An, maybe you have a, you have an assignment due at a certain date. You want to make sure you have that documented on your calendar or another meeting with your classmates. So that can be your friend to keep yourself organized. Um, it is key, though, that you don't over schedule yourself and extend yourself out to a point where you're not able to complete those appointments. Uh, or your assignments on time, because then you, you're just going to be setting yourself up uh, for lack of success by overscheduling. And then speaking on success, you want to reflect on those wins that you have, uh, what worked well and what didn't work well. If it worked well, you want to key in on those and expand on what did work well so that you can continue that and move, move forward to the next week uh, for those continued successes. If it didn't work, make those small adjustments, nothing drastic that's going to put you on a road that's going to be varied. Uh, make sure you make those adjustments small so that you can compensate if it's not going to work. You can go back to a baseline uh, adjustment so that you know, you can get back on track and try something different without a drastic change. Uh, you know, ask yourself, what online courses did you feel confident with? Uh, which ones you weren't so confident with? And what you can do to change that? How can you make those ones that you weren't so sure about uh, a little bit more confident for you? Um, maybe ask, what kind of support do you need? Do you need IT support? Maybe ask your professor, um, maybe a tutor if the subject matter for the topic uh, is overwhelming you. Uh, just take that time to reflect. It's key for effective study and your work habits. Set aside that specific time to complete your assignments and do, do your work study so that you can come into class prepared and focused and uh, be a key on for success. Uh, this is just an overview snapshot of the work life, the work life balance and how you would manage it. Uh, we all know that uh, how we act and how we behave, uh, it, it has effect not just on ourselves physically and emotionally, uh, but also it affects others around us socially. So uh, take time to make sure that you are well balanced and you're keeping your emotions and yourself in check. You're also staying physical fit so that you're being healthy uh, because that will enhance your ability to be successful in a learning environment that's virtual. Um, I know personally, I worked full time. It was very difficult. But once you set aside that specific time and uh, use that time efficiently, uh, you'll be more successful um, as a, have a, having a family and working at the full time. It was a very specific time that I had to use during that learning environment, which was Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening for me. Uh, so you have to kind of work and schedule what's going to work best for each and every one of you. Um, and uh, at that time, you know, your family and everybody around, they kind of know, hey, they've got to set aside this time for class. 
So it's kind of that learning environment and uh, people kind of respect that. So you have that time set aside. Uh, this is just some student resources and veteran resources that you can have. Um, obviously, no matter what school that you go to, whether it's virtual or in campus, uh, you want to meet with the VRC and the peace, people that are in there. Uh, these are the representatives that are going to assist you the most, especially as a veteran. They understand your needs as a veteran student, and they can support you and help you be successful every step of the way. Um, meet with them, maybe a certifying official. They can assist you with any enrollment or your you know, certifying for the VA at GI Bill benefits. Uh, you maybe can attend virtual workshops through them like this one from your school. Uh, and then also any other services and programs that they may have that you're eligible for. Maybe a work study program um, or maybe also with uh, other campus support, financial aid, educational opportunity improvement, the library and tutoring may be able to assist you with your uh, learning. Um, the writing center can help you with grammar and spelling is also enhancing your writing abilities. Uh, and then also the big one, like I mentioned, maybe the IT folks at the school at campus can help you to make sure that you're going to be successful with those technology issues that you may be faced with for your hardware and your software and connectivity issues. Uh, off campus support, there's our nonprofits in VFW and American Legion uh, and the Rotary and other organizations, as well as the VA and vet centers. You know, there's so many other officers, offices out there that are nonprofits to assist veterans. Uh, you just have to look for them in your region and where they're at uh, that can help you. And uh, that's with that being said, this is my contact information. I know that was short and sweet. Hopefully those tips and tricks can help you uh, at least get some baseline information and in going forward if you haven't already started in the virtual learning environment. Uh, they're just some tips, like we mentioned, to be successful. Uh, and hopefully everything that you can do will implement that to make changes to continually adapt to the virtual environment for your learning. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to ask my colleague Derek Rose to step in and uh, uh, go through any of the questions that we may have had, if we had any on board. And uh, here's everyone's contact information, myself, Derek, as well as Kevin Graves on one slide. And uh, we'll go ahead and open up to questions. Derek, how are we doing? Hey, Kirk, thank you. At this time, we do not have any uh, open questions that came in the, in the Q&A. So if Great. you just kind of wanted to, um, you know, maybe lead us out or um, just kind of give it a few more minutes. But uh, the Q&A is still open. So if you do have a question, you can drop it in there and any one of the panelists can answer. But um, nothing to address at this time, Kirk. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll leave this open ended uh, for now. If anyone doesn't have anything to ask or questions, uh, uh, I just seen one pop in the chat. Can you talk about what kinds of accommodations schools offer? Um, sure. Yeah, you know, we have a uh, subject matter expert. Our Lauren Wagner is here from Skyline College, and she's going to be available to answer any questions as well as Bridget, Bridget Leach if they have anything related to the school specifically that they may offer. Maybe they can chime in and answer that question directly. Hi there. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank Hi, you. perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so um, at Skyline College, we do have a dedicated department um, called the Educational Access Center. And so we have um, on board a full staff of individuals that can help students um, kind of if they need extended uh, accommodations for um, extended uh, test taking or if anything, they needed some um, additional materials or assistance tutoring, we can assist them with that. They collaborate very closely with the Learning Center and we have um, a full staff of tutors and they even actually go into more um, program specific tutoring. So we have a STEM Center um, tutoring realm and we also have um, a great tutors that help with like paper writing or if you have something already done, um, they're there to help. Uh, go through and edit, make modifications, um, help you with uh, the citations, um, you know, part of a paper, because I always find um, some instructors um, will have different regulations. Some want you to write an MLA style or APA style, or I always found academic writing very challenging. Um, so I always took advantage of um, writing workshops. Um, and we're here to help and support you. Um, Bridget, did you want to add anything on your end? If not, that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and thanks so much, Lauren. That's super helpful. Um, yeah, and it's great to know. I think the, the the accommodations that often come up that you know I've seen, I think over the years at different schools that we've supported from the kind of our San Francisco VA Student Veteran Health Program. Um, a lot of the common accommodations that I feel like come up are, um, it, like you were saying, extra time on tests and reduced distraction environment options as well. So sometimes um, schools will let veterans and any student with any sort of documented disability, and if you have a service connection disability rating, that's you pretty much kind of checks that box, checks that box for that. Um, a lot of times they'll allow students to take tests in a reduced distraction environment. So they'll let them take them in a special room in the disability center or accommodation center, um, or virtually it's interesting to see how that might happen. But I think there's, you know, certainly because it's part of the ADA, um, legally they have to make sure that they're um, working with you guys to be able to meet those um, accommodations and make sure that they're supporting you guys. So always important, I think, to, to be aware of that. So thanks so much to both of you guys for answering that. Um, but that's great. Thank you. How, uh, Bridget, make you expand, how does that work for the virtual learners um, with any ADA uh, disabilities during their classroom instruction? I mean, obviously they have to be compliant for any uh, electronic material that they're gonna provide, whether it be a, a PDF document or something like that, or if they're impaired visually, how does that work from the school uh, for their platforms? Do they have uh, assistance and accommodations for the student for any maybe assisted devices that they can have to their computer? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, I think it varies a lot from school to school, and Lauren may be able to speak about kind of what Skyline has specifically, um, but I know there's a lot of different, um, you know, kind of technology that's really expanding, I feel like, exponentially over the years. Um, since I've been doing this since 2010, I feel like every day there is more and more that we're um, able to access. And I think there is a lot of different um, abilities to have even like text to audio accommodations and those kinds of assisted technology assistive technology, um, as well as things like um, I know that there was a period of time um, where at the VA, we were also providing kind of smart pens that actually audio record lectures and get tied to specific notebooks um, where you can kind of actually go and look back to the place in the text um, that you were writing or in your notes, and then it'll actually kind of record um, or the recording from that part of the lecture will happen. So there's those kinds of things. And I mean, and that was back in the day they were doing those. So I can only imagine that that kind of technology has even continued to advance. Um, and then I think also just for online um, learning as well, um, I think a lot of times um, instructors are really required to provide additional time on tests. Maybe um, the deadline for, for certain students is like after an hour, but maybe for students that have time and a half for tests are able to kind of have an extended time for that. Um, and if professors and instructors are not following that, I mean, that's really something that students should kind of really advocate for themselves to say, you know, I have this accommodation that I'm supposed to be entitled to. Um, and if they ever need advocacy from us, from our the Student Veteran Health Program at the at San Francisco VA or Lauren or any of the staff, um, different schools, I think it's really important to, um, to make sure that you're reaching out for support if you're feeling like you can't quite effectively be your own advocate, but of course, I always encourage folks to do that themselves as well. Thank you very much. Excellent answer. We appreciate you guys logging in and uh, uh, taking the time to answer the questions. So, I mean, you're welcome to stay on as panelists here and, and answer. Um, I see, Derek, we have one in the Q&A. Um, if yeah. does CalVet offer any workshops on tips? how vets can transition back to their homes, families, and home lives. Um, I think I have a question of, for clarification. Is this like for transitioning from active duty back to their homes, families, and home life? Or um, specifically, uh, I want to make sure I'm answering the question correctly and putting it in the correct context, because um, this could be taken for somebody that may be challenged with their home life. Uh, in trying to get back into a home. So I want to make sure yeah. that this is accurate. Yeah, Kirk. So maybe just uh, while we wait for some clarification, I just wanted to touch. Um, so in kind of our core curriculum, 
pathway in our modules, you know, we kind of dove into the benefits side with the module five, which is all the great things that you get as a veteran, but also included in those modules is our module 10, um, which, you know, we didn't dive into too much today, but the actual title of that module is called Reboot Your Civilian Self. And some it's of the good. trainings and lessons in that module, um, the lessons are called Boot Camp in Reverse, kind of, you know, kind of giving you that training to kind of, you know, get back to your, you know, civilian life and kind of the, you know, the civilian uh, home life and domestic life as well. Uh, civilian cultural competency lessons to kind of how to, you know, translate all of your military service back into the civilian sector and just kind of having a really um, just kind of getting reintroduced to yourself as a civilian. So whether that's work, family, home life, um, I think those would be great uh, workshops to specifically offer, whether in person or virtually. Um, right. But these are all those. That's a great question. And on top of that, um, we also, you know, do kind of have a mental health um, aspect to our training as well. And I think this month is our mental health and resiliency um a, a, you know, topic and theme for the month. So we do partner with a lot of the veteran service organizations who just cover mental health in general. Um, right. So that all kind of ties hand in hand. So that's a, a great topic, I think, going forward to kind of really dive into, you know, transitioning back to civilian life and, you know, work life, home life, family life. So I, I would encourage you to maybe navigate some of those lessons on our module 10. Um, and, you know, we can, you know, just kind of go from there if, uh, you know, any other questions or we can make note of that for future trainings. Excellent. Thank you, Derek. Uh, also, if you are still currently active duty and you are stationed at one of the DOD installations throughout the state of California, our CalTAP program, we actually do attend in-person seminars for our CalTAP uh, at the various DOD installations. So you can always check with your uh, community services office or your um, readiness center education office if the CalTAP uh, is available at your base. Um, you can all go to our website for Eventbrite. A lot of times they're uh, logged on there and they're advertised there if we do uh, specific bases like, you know, Air Force, we do some of them. So, all right. Well, we don't have any other questions. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank all of our guest speakers, uh, myself and Derek, uh, and also Lauren uh, from the VA, as well as, or from Skyline, and then Bridget from the VA, my apologies. Uh, and we appreciate them uh, partnering with us today and providing the feedback and the answers. Uh, and then also with Kevin Graves, our link coordinator, who was traveling and had to log off. So uh, we want to thank you all for joining today for this brief webinar. And hopefully, if you are online and you're going to be attending school and learning online, uh, just stay focused and stay with it, and uh, you'll be successful. Reach out where the help is needed, and uh, there's plenty of assistance available to you to be successful. So you just have to advocate for your own self uh, and be successful there. Uh, with that, I'd like to highlight some upcoming webinars we're having throughout the rest of the month and the beginning of next month. Uh, you can see the list here. Go to our Eventbrite page and register for them or sign up for my CalVet and you can receive the workshop, uh, upcoming workshop uh, email and our quarterly newsletter as well. Again, I'll take the time to fill out the survey. Uh, the link or the QR code will take you to the survey monkey and you can, uh, it's a it's only a couple questions, take you about a minute or two. And uh, we do take that seriously, the feedback so that we can implement changes and continually improve these processes to provide you the resources that you guys are looking for. So again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and always, uh, we thank you all for your service. Thank you for uh, logging in and supporting CalTAP and the CalVet uh, program. Uh, we will see you again uh, on another webinar or if not in person. Uh, our contact information is still there. So if you have any questions going forward, please don't hesitate to email us or call the 800 number. Uh, we will be uh, getting back to you soon. Again, thank you all. Signing off from CalVet, have a great day.